What's going on everybody? Welcome to another episode of Snitches and Witches. How are you doing? You look awesome. You're a camera, but you know, you still look awesome. But the person on the other side of the camera. Hogwarts mystery did not go over very well for many different reasons with Harry Potter fans, but the chief of that had to be its freaking energy system. It was definitely the topic that was roasted the most when people were criticizing Hogwarts mystery. And there are many of you who are going, I don't know what you're talking about. What is an energy system? Why is it so terrible? And how did it work its way over into Wizards Unite? Let's jump right in. So what is an energy system? Energy systems use a limiter on how much energy or actions you can take within a game during a certain period of time. In the case of Hogwarts Mystery, people started classes which had an overall time limit. And during that amount of time, players had to accomplish a certain amount of tasks to earn a certain amount of points under that blanket of time. Players were given choices on which tasks they wanted to accomplish underneath that blanket time period with each item costing a certain amount of energy points to accomplish. If a player ran out of energy, then that meant they were kind of stuck and had to wait a certain amount of time for their energy bar to refill or refill enough so you could finish the class, which was up in an hour and you had an hour and a half before you got enough points. <sighs> I'm not speaking from experience. Essentially, when you break it down, it is a system of gameplay that either puts a limit on the amount that a player is able to interact with the game, and you can get over that limit by either waiting a certain amount of time, or if you need the energy now, you can pay the piper, i.e. in-app purchases. Normally, energy systems kind of aren't a big problem. It limits the amount of time that they spend on an application, and for the most part, that has a lot of benefits. However, when you couple that with the overarching you must finish this class in three hours problem, it, it's a huge money grab. It's obviously a money grab. No one, no one is delusional enough to think that this isn't a huge money grab. Jedi. This is a style of gameplay that developers use to push players into either making in-app purchases or waiting a certain amount of time. It hinges directly on whether or not the player has addicted themselves enough to the game to pay into it. The thing is, most gamers are pretty wise to this type of behavior. If they're not, they're either addicted to the point of delusion or they're five. Or a YouTuber, let's be honest. So we have spell energy in Wizards Unite. So does that mean that the gameplay is the same? Luckily for us, that is not the case because spell energy in Wizards Unite is in fact free and depending on how many inns are available in your area, infinite. Does this mean that Wizards Unite is going to suffer the same fate of being roasted like Hogwarts Mystery was? Well, no, because Unlike in Hogwarts Mystery, Wizards Unite has an unlimited amount of spell energy that you can gather with no time limits, depending on how many inns are within your area. Spell energy is used exclusively for wizarding challenges and for encounters with oddity. The best way to replace your spell energy is to visit an inn where you will be prompted to draw a glyph on the screen. You will be given some food and that food will have a certain amount of spell energy attached to it so you can replenish your spell bar. Each inn has a five minute cooldown, so you're fine. If you've got enough inns around you, you can just sit there and run around the block and keep getting your energy back and you should be fine. It could be a problem for some rural players, but for the most part, it's fine. You're not pushed into purchasing things that you're not gonna want. You can also snag energy at greenhouses where you will go through a mini game where you are prompted to pick between three different plant pots. When you pick a plant pot, you may also receive some spell energy along with your potions ingredients. In Wizards Unite, there is no timer placed on replenishing that spell energy. In Hogwarts Mystery, one point 
meant you had to wait for four minutes. In Wizards Unite, if you come back an hour later to the game, you will still have the same amount of spell energy that you did when you left. This keeps players engaged in the game and forces them to keep playing if they want to progress in the wizarding challenges. Also, it's only required for wizarding challenges and for these encounters with oddities, which means it's not required in order to advance your entire game unless you want to complete your oddities page or go to a wizarding challenge. Unlike Hogwarts Mystery, where if you want to continue your gameplay, you have to engage with this energy system. If you don't like the energy system in, in Wizards Unite, you can safely play for years without engaging in this energy system ever. So why is Wizards Unite's energy system going to work meanwhile Hogwarts Mysteries will not? Wizards Unite's energy system does not put a limit on players. It's just during combat scenarios. If the same system was implemented in Wizards Unite as was in Hogwarts Mystery, it would literally take spell energy to interact with an inn or a greenhouse or pick something up or walk or breathe. Hogwarts Mystery's energy system with the timer to replace it, the timer placed on tasks required to advance through gameplay, and the in-app purchases offered to you in order to advance faster through that gameplay made it obvious that this was just a huge money grab from the start. Meanwhile, Wizards Unite, all you have to do is go find another inn or a greenhouse to replace your spell energy. The good thing about the in-app purchases within Wizards Unite, from what we have seen so far, help you advance slightly faster through the game, but won't limit your abilities to level up as quickly as possible. Simplistic tapping gameplay, along with the poor writing in Hogwarts Mystery, the canonical breaks from the overall wizarding world, and the repetition basically made it a complete snore to play. Don't make messes. In order to advance your gameplay, you repeated the same classes over and over and over again, using the same motions in order to get past it over and over again. It wasn't a grind, it was boring. If you couple that with the constant in-game events that don't seem above board, along with a broken in-game economy, where you're rewarded gold that you can't spend because you've already bought everything, ladies and gentlemen, that is the recipe for a flop. However, we all know who Jam City is. Their priorities were never to advance canon. Their priorities were never to appease a fandom. They came in wanting to make money. Harry Potter has huge buying power behind it. If you attach Harry Potter to anything, it becomes a huge money tree. And so Port Key Games allowed them to come in and use the game title for a while with the full knowledge that as soon as Wizards Unite dropped, it was all over. Wizards Unite does not require a buttload of in-app purchases in order to keep playing and keep having fun. There is no gatekeeper saying, no, you have spent 30 energy and therefore you must either go away or pay me more money. Wizards Unite allows you the option of, okay, well, you can't do another wizarding challenge. So, go run around, encounter one of the foundables, or go do, or go to an inn and collect more spell energy for a while, or go brew some potions, or unlock a portmanteau, and come back later. Wizards Unite has continuing in-game play while you're looking for opportunities to refill that spell bar, which means it's going to be vastly more addictive, and there's going to be a higher audience retention. And that, that's where the money's made. It's impressive enough that Wizards Unite is coming out with Harry Potter attached to it, along with Niantic attached to it. Their audience retention speaks for itself. Though there have been snafus in the past, Niantic has been consistent in keeping their player ba base engaged with their games through events, added content, and other features. Hogwarts Mystery hasn't done that. They've done some in-game events and then been like, ha ha, bye, we have all your money. Simply because of the fact that Wizards Unite is going to stick around for a lot longer. They're not clearly just trying to make money off of you and they want to have fun and engage with the wizarding world. That means lasting gameplay and a lasting user base. That's all I've got for this video. What do you think? Am I right? Is Wizards Unite going to be a much better game than Hogwarts Mystery? Or do you think we've got another flop on our hands? Let me know in the comments down below. I personally think that Wizards Unite is a far superior game. It just flat out is. It builds on all of the strengths that were in Pokemon Go and takes a few of the mistakes they made, throws them in the trash, and makes them better. 
things like skill trees. We don't have skill trees in Pokemon Go. There's friggin' skill trees. I just wanted skill trees. I'm so excited. I cannot. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this video, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe and make sure to ring the bell so you know when I post more Wizards Unite content. It feels like we are right around the corner from this launching, so make sure you are subscribed because I don't know, I'm kinda cute. I don't freaking know. I got cute kids, does that count? And just remember that I love you all, always. Okay, I'm gonna go make more coffee. Bye. Standing at my closet door, potential outfits on the floor. Also very many clothes, but I've got nothing to wear. Need to paint a perfect face before I set foot in that place. Cover every little flaw, and I've got to tame my hair.